Kansas State falls to Texas Tech in Bramlage Coliseum 77-63 to last night. And this is KSO Today for January 15th, 2020. I'm going to jump straight into some of our coverage of last night's game. Share some thoughts outside of that coverage too. Um, talk a little bit of hoops recruiting and then give you a sense of what to look for on the site the next couple of days. Uh, before I do that, of course, I do want to take a quick second to thank both of our sponsors, at least for these podcasts. Uh, People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. I've told you the last couple of days about the branch and ATM locations for PSB throughout the state, but you can also check them out online at www.psbbanks.com. Uh, let's move on to the game last night. Again, K-State falls to 0-4 in Big 12 play. Uh, certainly very frustrating for the Wildcats, their players, their fans, no doubt about it. Everybody in Brownwich College team last night probably didn't have a lot of fun watching what they saw. Um, a lot of what I'll talk through will show up in a story that we call the final, um, something I publish after every game on the site. Really, a lot of the work in those things comes from Chris Nelson, uh, who gives you really, re really detailed X's and O's breakdowns of what happened in the contest. And then, of course, at KSU underscore fan. You can follow him there on Twitter. Helps us out as well. Um, he went on the board late last night and shared a, a number of really uh, interesting advanced statistics in the in the final game thread on the board. So um, some of the stuff I've talked through will show up in there. Of course, I need to read some of it off of there. Um, but head to the board if you haven't already to read the stuff from Nelson and from Fan. Uh, on that game so within that within that column or within that piece I wrote a little, little bit of a column every week called what does it mean um, I'm just going to read that off of here because these are my thoughts kind of as the game was wrapping up last night and I type this usually with a few minutes left in the game unless there's something um, still on the line but here's what I wrote I said bluntly it may force Bruce Weber and K-State to really turn its attention heavily to future development of this roster uh, of course it may have already started tonight Dejuan Gordon obviously got the start. Antonio Gordon and Montavious Murphy both saw significantly more action than a returning senior. McCall Mawain, who actually played six minutes despite not really bad in the foul trouble, um, significantly less than both Murphy and Gordon inside. Um, that was a rambling aside. Back to what I wrote. Um, as did Levi Stockard, a junior, also played way more than Mawain. You could certainly have argued that it was appropriate earlier, of course, to go young, but that's hard to do when you're 0-2 and your program won a conference championship a year ago with an 0-2 league start. Reality, of course, lets you know that's not happening again, but you don't want to send the message to your players you're looking forward after two losses considering that result a year ago. I thought the blowout loss at Texas book volumes, and tonight's home loss, actually last night's home loss to the Red Raiders, made it abundantly clear the Wildcats, as currently constructed, are not ready to compete in the Big 12. Uh, that was also pretty apparent before this point. Uh, the first four games of conference, of conference play has made this painfully, painfully obvious, though and may force further action. The effort has mostly remained, and it's likely become time to invest the majority of the attention back into those who look like long-term pieces. It may be worth noting that with four minutes left to play, Casey was going to the lineup of four newcomers, Antonio Gordon, Dejuan Gordon, Montavious Murphy, and David Sloan, along with senior Xavier, Xavier Sneed. Uh, that's the end of what I wrote there. Cardi Ajada would return to the lineup after that, and Cardi was Casey's leading scorer last night. I'm not intentionally trying to disclude him from that, but I couldn't help but notice they were going, you know, with four newcomers and then the senior they trust the most and Xavier Sneed late in that game. Um, some post-game notes um, from Bruce Weber in the press conference last night. I asked specifically, uh, hey, did Mac play six minutes because of bad matchups or because of that's what he deserved for minutes? And Weber was pretty honest, said that Mac didn't show the energy, the motor, the enthusiasm they wanted. Um, that's why they put him on the bench. So he didn't really mislead why he wasn't playing. Mac was benched last night. Uh, Weber talked about how much the players cared in the locker room afterwards. Uh, a lot of pain in there. That hasn't gone away. Um, so they have to keep caring, believing, and trying different things. Uh, they turned it over 20 times last night. That's something Grant Flanders asked about, particularly with two, 10 of those coming from their point guards. And Weber was very frustrated. Of course, said just too many turnovers. And that's really what cost K-State last night. That and some defensive lapses, of course. Um, Montavious Murphy had a really nice game with nine of nine from the free throw line. I think he gave K-State 11 and six. Weber really appreciated him. Does nothing but praise, praise that guy. And the same quote went on to bring up Antonio Gordon. Talk about how hard those two play. Um, and Dejuan Gordy feels the same way about. Does not know if Mike McGurl is going to be available this coming Saturday against West Virginia. He did note earlier when I was asking them a call my question that they'll need Mac more Saturday against West Virginia, a much more bigger physical team. They'll need him to play well to have any chance against the best team they've played all year. Um, Weber did talk about playing Murphy and Antonio Gordon together more in the post. He likes how hard they play. Um, the quote he kept saying was they play their butts off the same as Dejuan, and that's a great thing to start with. So Weber really appreciates the effort those freshmen are giving and will continue to play them a lot more. I think Xavier Sneed, um, I just really respect that guy. You know, he shows the same emotion post game, whether they, whether they win or lose, 
Um, all he would say about uh, the season so far is they have a lot of guys who play as hard as they can. You can't fault them for that, and they have to make more plays. So very mature guy. He did not play particularly well last night. Xavier Sneed did not. Um, and K-State's offense was good, well, better despite that. But Xavier Sneed's effort, you know, never, never wavers. And um, he'll certainly be playing hard the rest of the season. And even if K-State turns to a youth movement, which is something I think is absolutely needed, Xavier Sneed's the exact kind of senior he's still want eating up 40 minutes if he wants in that scenario because he's going to play hard. He's going to set the example on both ends. He's not going to demand the ball when it's not healthy. So he is a great person to build uh, around, even in a season when the season's going to look really bad from win-loss record. That's not to make you happy, but he's still a valuable piece to work with these young players. It was cool to see Eric Bossy, you know, Rivals National Recruiting Expert, jump on our board last night and discuss the postgame stuff. Not recruiting, but discussing postgame. And he referenced, you know, how he thinks some of these freshmen could really benefit from having a leader like Barry Brown around, which I totally agree with. And that is missing and really causing a lack of success on the court this year. But I do think having, you know, Xavier Sneed around them, at least that's a great example. You know, moving on from that, we'll talk a lot more about basketball throughout the season, of course. West Virginia preview will come as we get closer to that game. Uh, a quick catch up to hoops recruiting. I think it's confusing to some people. I don't want to make it super, super clear because I'd rather you subscribe to our site and we explain it to you on there. But I'll give you a, a quick rundown of it. K-State, of course, taking the transfer of Casey Azagu, the transfer from UTEP. I still think the Wildcats are recruiting as many as two more players on top of that would take as many as two more. I know three they're looking at are Carlton Lingard, a four-star junior college post at Grant Flanders, wrote an update for in KSO not long ago. Uh, Donovan Williams, a four-star high school player out of Nebraska that we talked about quite on the message board yesterday and had some insight on him. And then Kobe Clark, a six-foot-six small forward from Bashan in St. Louis. So I watched play in person here two summers ago when Bashan uh, came and camped in Manhattan. Kind of a point forward type. Um... You know, he's not he's not Shane Southwell. That's not a perfect comparison, but he's 6'6", long, thin, good ball handler, good passer, um, not as explosive an athlete, so that's the kind of player you might be looking at there. A couple more names I got sent yesterday, too, I think they're looking at, but I'm not as ready to share those, especially on here, um, and I'm not sure how, how accurate it is just yet. But K-State, again, took four players in the early signing period, uh, all rivals 150 members in Nigel Pack. Um, Davion Bradford, Luke Kasubke, and Selton Miguel, best recruiting class Bruce Weber has signed at K-State. They will continue to add to it here in this second period. They may take as many as seven players total. The rest of this week, uh, I know Derek Young and Flanders are both working on recruiting notebooks, uh, big ones for this week. Flanders may become more of a big board to describe some of those names I just gave to you and some that I didn't share just yet. Um, expect to see both of those this week. We'll also continue Derek's 2021 recruiting previews, which go position by position. I think he'll be on to like fullbacks and tight ends next. Um, we'll have a lot of coverage of this weekend's West Virginia game, both before the game and throughout the contest. And I still expect we'll have some football scheduling news to share with you in the not too distant future. Uh, I think that's really wraps it up for today in this latest edition of KSO Today. I do appreciate our sponsors, People State Bank and Legacy Insurance. Another very valuable sponsor of ours. They all are, of course. I shouldn't put it that way. Um, it's Tallgrass Tap House. We will be there Thursday night at 7 p.m. to record a full edition of the KSO show unless we have K-State coaches there instead and do that until you come watch that. So one of those two things is going to happen. Appreciate your time. Thank you for listening. Please take a moment and do me a favor. Hit the red subscribe button on the bottom right corner of the screen if you're watching this on YouTube. And please enjoy your Wednesday.